All right, come on, give Jesus the best praise every campus. Come on, man. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. What's up, Baker Campus? How you guys doing? I got a special announcement for our Baker Campus in just a second. Hello, Livingston Parish Campus and Mid-City Campus and Warehouse Campus and soon to be HOMA Campus, y'all. HOMA. And everybody watching online, uh, I, I want to just say this is student weekend, and, and at, at every campus we just prayed for all of our students. But I want to tell you one of the greatest student ministries, I believe, in America is bold student ministries right here at Bethany. And if you have a young person that's in junior high and high school, I would encourage you strongly to get them plugged in to bold. They, they won't regret it. They'll love it. And then if you are a young adult from the age of 18 all the way to 30, we have what we call the collective. And if you're a student in college or even if you're getting out of college and you're young married and looking for your place to connect, I think that the collective rocks, absolutely rocks. And we've got some great plans for... Uh, for this semester, so make sure you plug in. Before I, I speak to you today, and I'm pumped about the message, this message is going to, it's been rocking me, and I promise you God's going to speak to you. I want to give you an update on the church and where we're at, because a lot of times it's easy to be out of the loop on some of the projects that we have going on. So I'd like to kind of just fill you in. First, I want to talk about our Livingston Parish campus. And uh, uh, two months ago, I announced that our Livingston Parish campus, we had purchased land and we're going to start building, and we've been in the process of trying to get uh, all of the permits in order to do that. If there's one thing you guys can be praying for us with Livingston Parish getting that building is that we get the permits to mitigate out of some of the wetlands that are on the property. And uh, we're getting news that it's going to take a little bit longer than we had hoped for, so y'all pray that that goes through quickly. I'll give you a little update on the finances of it. Uh, in June, we were able to see $145,000 raised towards that building. And then uh, to date, in August, we have $232,000 that have been raised to that. So give God praise and give yourselves a hand. The generosity is amazing. We've been able to save as a church $2 million towards this project. And uh, we, so we've raised two, uh, 232000 We have a remaining $2.7 million. Here's what I would love to see happen. By the time we break ground and, and build this building, I want to see it built for cash. Don't want to go to the bank, borrow money, and I know that we can do it. God has blessed us with so many people. So um, I just want to encourage you, open up your heart, ask God what he would have you to give towards that. And if you go on our website, you can go to Kingdom Builders, and it's Lane 5. If you want to designate towards this building, you go to Kingdom Builders Lane 5, and you can give directly towards it. Now I want to talk to you about Baker Campus. And Baker Campus is the original campus uh, from Bethany, started in 1963. And last year, one year ago, actually it's almost right exactly one year ago, we went through the flood that all of us, uh, probably 90% of our church was somehow affected by the flood. Our Baker campus is 150,000 square feet of, of buildings through the years that we've built. All of it was underwater, some places four feet underwater. We had approximately close to $3 million of damage to that building, and some estimates are $4 million, but because of so many volunteer man hours of you guys getting up there and helping, we've knocked about a million of that away just with volunteer man hours, but we did not have flood insurance on our Baker property, and so we have been slowly just giving to see that thing restored, sheet rocks, floors, carpets, the, the whole nine yards, but I'm pleased to announce that next weekend, that congregation at Baker Campus, who is now in the gym, will be moving back into our main auditorium for the first time. And I think we should give God a big praise for that, because that is massive. It is massive. And I remember looking at that building and feeling like, I think this is it. I don't see how we're ever going to recover. And here we are about to be in there. And on August the 27th, which is three weeks from now, we're going to actually dedicate. We've invited some political leaders, business leaders, and we're going to dedicate the building. We wanted to get in the building and give us a few weeks to get the kinks out before we invited people to come and celebrate with us. And so, but so pumped about that. And then I want to give you an update on Homa Campus. You guys have been here and we're launching a campus in Homa. And I'm thrilled to see what God is doing. Last Sunday night, I drove down there and there was a, a, an interest meeting, a launch team meeting, but we had uh, right at 200 people that showed up to be a part of that. These are people that are going to be a part of worship ministries, kids ministries, and uh, this is Pastor Simon and Wanda Bear who are launching that campus. And this is a cool thing. At the end of the meeting, I gave an altar call to see if anybody needed to make Jesus the Lord of their life, and we had six people give their hearts to Jesus. And so those were the first fruits of what's going to happen in Homa. 
And the final thing I'm going to tell you is right here at South Campus, uh, you've probably noticed some buildings as you drive in and it's with ramps and uh, they're looking better and better and prettier and prettier. We had to bring those because we've had uh, Bethany Christian School has been here at our South Auditorium, but we've outgrown our facility here. So we had to add more classrooms for our K through five. Uh, and this year right here at South, we have close to 200 uh, students that are going to be a part of that. And, and I just want to tell you, if you, if you have a young person and uh, under kindergarten or through fifth grade, that needs a solid Christian education, Bethany Christian School rocks, okay? So, uh, and, and there's still time to get your young person in. So I wanted you to hear all of that, see all of that. That's kind of an update. Are you guys ready to get into God's Word? Okay, uh, I'm going to be taking this message today from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm entitling it, Built to Last. Built to Last, like Ford Trucks. Yeah? <laughs> Built to last. Um, if you guys are okay, let's read a good bit of scripture this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we have already laid, Jesus Christ. Verse 12, anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will, be, will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Come on, let's open our hearts and ask God to speak to us. Oh, my Father, thank you so much for your church. Thank you for your people. Lord, we're so humbled to be able to be with one another and to be in your presence. Now, God, I just ask you that you would please change my life today, change how I perceive the world, change how I perceive you. I pray that every person that here that has an ear to hear, that you would change their life. God, through your word today, we submit ourselves, we humble ourselves before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. By a show of hands, how many of you guys love gumbo? You like a good gumbo? I mean, come on. If you don't like a good gumbo, you're not true Louisianan. Like, you need to move. But by, by the same token, by the same show of hands, how many of you can self-proclaimed cook a good gumbo? Wow, it's almost the same exact amount of people. That's impressive. Well, a couple of years ago, I got into the gumbo-making hobby. And it all started off with a roux that came out of a box. <laughs> That's how northern people make gumbos. For those of you that are watching the podcast, you live somewhere else, that don't make a gumbo with a box roux. But then I graduated from the box roux, and I got a jar roux. <laughs> the jar roux is a good bit better than the box box roux. And if you're feeling lazy, it's, it's pretty, pretty close. It's pretty good. But last year, uh, I began to experiment with making my own roux. And can I just tell you, I killed it. It was a slam dunk. I mean, awesome. And pride comes before a fall, I know. But that one was, was slamming. But anybody that cooks a good gumbo knows that it all starts with the root. If you mess up the root, you mess up the whole gumbo. And what Paul is talking about here is if you mess up the root, which is Jesus Christ, you mess up the whole gumbo. And it's the same with building a building. Angie and I have had the uh, privilege of being able to build a house. And when you build a house, you want to get the foundation right because everything hinges on the foundation. If a builder goes cheap on the foundation... In the years to come, you start to really experience the difficulties of having a cheap foundation. It begins to crack or begins to move on you. You want that foundation to be right. And on top of that, you can build with whatever materials you want, but the foundation has to be right. I heard a story recently. My dad told me of a friend of his that was from Monroe, Louisiana, and he hired a guy to build his house. And the guy built the house drunk. And so the morning that he woke up to lay the foundation, he, it's supposed to be in a perfect square, and he did it two feet out of square. So it was more like an odd-shaped square. 
So he was drunk when they did this. And so when they had to build the house, they had to make a perfect square with the studs. And so it left these corners out that were like just random corners that were left out. And every part of the house they built, they had to specially cut the sheetrock. They had to specially cut the, the roof. The whole house was affected because the foundation was wrong. And, and, and I want to talk, this is what Paul is talking about, that guys, you are building your life. Everybody listening to me, you are building your life right now, and you better make sure the foundation is right. Don't mess with the root. Don't mess with the foundation. You have to get it right. You have to get it right. Some people are so obsessed with the trimmings and the toppings and the ingredients, and, but no, we got to get all the way down to the root. We got to get this thing right from the start. So I want to give you three things from this passage that Paul is telling us that we have to do. The first thing is we have to build on Christ. We have to build on Christ. If you're following your outline, you can fill out the first blank. We, we have to build on Christ. You know, in the world, people are building on all kind of things. And the philosophy of the world, you can track it on social media. You can track it on, in the news. Some people build their entire life on the concept of education. And education is awesome. You should get educated. Thank God for education. We just prayed for students and teachers and but you know what? If your entire life is just built on the principle of I just have to get educated, that foundation is not as true and as good as the one that we're talking about, which is Christ Jesus. You can't build your life on the concept of success. I just want to climb and climb and climb, get more and more money, and then I'm building my life on the principle of success. Uh, you can't build it on this dream for fame. Uh, I like to watch America's Got Talent, and sometimes I have to turn it off, but sometimes it's good. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes I watch it with my girls. I love to see people who think they're talented and they're not. You know, they get the buzzer. And then the people that, that, that uh, are talented, they move on. It's great to see the talent that God has created. But recently, one of the talents that made it through to the second round got voted off by the judges. And she was so distraught. And when she was on the, on the interview, they said, how do you feel about this moment? And this was her words. My life is over. My dream is gone. And she was like 19 years old. The world is looking for a foundation to build their life on, a philosophy to build their life on. And I'm telling you, there's only one worth building on, and it's Christ Jesus. But listen to me, in the church world, a lot of times we build our Christianity, our foundation, on things that are also temporal. Some things that we build our faith on are leaders, Christian leaders. And I just want to tell you, I am a Christian leader. Don't build your life on me. Please, don't build your life on me. I see it happen so many times where people put their faith in a man. And I'm telling you, men will fail you. There's only one perfect man. His name is Jesus Christ. Listen, I pray, I pray I never fail you. I pray I never disappoint you. But if I do, you keep moving on with Jesus Christ because I am not the foundation of your salvation. I am simply a servant like every one of you guys with the privilege of being able to minister. But Paul, you know, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church, and they got hung up in this issue. Some of them were saying, Paul's my guy. Paul's the man. And some of them were saying, no, Apollos, he's the better speaker. Some were saying, Peter, he's the cornerstone of the church. He's my guy. And this is what Paul had to tell them in 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 12, some of you are saying, I'm a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos or I follow Peter. Or, I only follow Christ. Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Like, was I, Jonathan, crucified for you? No, guys, no, no. I probably would have said no. <laughs> you would too. Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. So don't build your foundation on the latest, greatest preacher. And, man, I thank God for ministers of the gospel. But, guys, just learn from, glean from, but do not idolize a, a preacher or a leader. Do not do it. Some people build their foundation on religion. 
And this is what that looks like. They get in the routine of church and, and the whole deal, but they lose sight of their relationship with Jesus. Like they hadn't talked to Jesus in forever, but they go to church. And their foundation is religion. And I'm telling you, that is a faulty foundation. You can come to church every day of your life for the rest of your life, but if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. No amount of going to church will, will do anything for you. And then some people build their foundation on other people, and, and they come into church, and they get their heart right with Jesus. They get saved, but then they develop a network of friends, and, and their whole life exists in this bubble of Christianity, and they think that they're saved because they have relationships that are Christian, but I'm telling you, they've lost their relationship with Jesus Christ, and their foundation is on these people. And when their friends backstab them or, or backbite, you know, talk about them, and God they quit it all because these people. And some people build their faith on expectations of what they think Jesus should do for them. Like when I got saved, I should have been a lot happier. I should have gotten healed about from this disease, and I shouldn't have lost my mom to cancer. And all that stuff happened, and now I don't believe in Jesus Christ anymore. I'm telling you, our expectations of Jesus are not the, the, the foundation our relationship with him is the only foundation. So what am I telling you, church, and everybody that has an ear to hear? Build your life on Jesus. Build your life on Jesus. Maybe that sounds abstract. Say, how do, how do I build my life on Jesus? I'll just say with your marriage. You want your marriage to last? And, and guys, as a pastor... I see so many people that their marriages are in trouble. You, there are marriages here that are in big trouble, big trouble. And it breaks my heart. But I do know statistically that one out of every two marriages are headed for divorce. But they ran numbers. Couples that pray together and read their Bible together and have a walk with the Lord together that number decreases to one out of even over a 1,000. So 0.10% of, of those marriages uh, are the ones. So you think about the, the ratio. Build your marriage on Jesus. What a great thought. How about you pursue Jesus together? Build your parenting on Jesus. Build your dreams and your hopes and everything that you're going to do in life on Jesus. You want to know how am I raising my kids? Yes, I want them educated. Yes, I'm teaching them good manners, but I am giving them Jesus. I am giving them Jesus every night, every morning. I'm building my parenting on Jesus. This is the foundation that will not disappoint you. Build it all on Christ. Amen. And li listen to me. Don't just build the kitchen on Christ and then the living room out on the dirt. Some people build parts of their life on Christ and other parts of their life, they, it's like they compartmentalize their Christianity. I'm talking about a Monday through Sunday, Jesus as the foundation for every room, the bedroom, the kitchen, the every part. Amen? The second thought that I want to give you is to build with caution. Build on Christ and then build with caution. Paul really warns them that once you have the foundation right, you can choose whatever materials you want. And uh, it's true with a good gumbo. Once you get the roux right, you can, you can pretty much make up all these different ingredients. Now, I'm not a big seafood gumbo guy. The reason why is because it requires a lot of work. You got to get the claws out. You got to get the meat out. I don't want to work at my gumbo. I just want to eat my gumbo. I don't want to peel shrimp in my gumbo. I don't know. That's offensive to some. Some people just, that's the only thing they want is a, is a seafood gumbo. I like a chicken and sausage gumbo. So I'm going to choose some chicken and sausage, and dark meat is better than white meat when it comes to the gumbo. It just, it just works better. It's tastier. It doesn't dry out. But, but I love a chicken and sausage gumbo. Another thing that I can't stand that people do is they ruin their gumbo with okra. <laughs> I know. Stone me. I know. I know. Come at me. But it makes it slimy, everybody. It just makes it slimy, and you know it. You know it. It just, it's like, I feel like I, I went and got some kid slime and dropped it in there. 
Okra messes it up. Am I going to have to resign from being your pastor? Oh, my gosh. I'll win you back. I'll win you back. How many of you like a spicy gumbo? Like you like a little kick to it? Okay, I kind of made up for the, for the okra. But you can choose whatever ingredients you want. I, I know some people that they throw the whole kitchen sink in there. Everything. It's like, it's like everything. You can choose whatever you want. You're creating your own house. And I want you to know the same with when you're picking out your house. You ever seen somebody that builds an ugly house? They pick out the weirdest tile and the ugliest paint colors and the weird, they pick out, but it's their house. They get to live in their house. And what Paul is saying is the builders get to choose whatever they want. As long as the foundation is Jesus, you are constructing the materials to your house. But Paul says, be very careful because some are going to use gold, silver, and precious stones, and some are going to use wood, hay, and stubble. And he says, on the day of judgment, you're going to stand there with your house, and that house is going to get the, the fire of God, and sometimes all of it's going to be burned up. And think about the possibility that everything you're constructing in, through the decades of your life, everything you're constructing could possibly be melted away in one moment. That's why we have to approach how we build our life with wisdom, and we need to do it humbly, saying, God, please help me. So I believe that the materials that we construct our life or the ingredients that we put in the gumbo are the beliefs that we choose to direct our lives. What do you believe? See, Christ is the foundation, but Christendom is filled with all kinds of different beliefs. We have the faith camp. And the faith camp is, it's all about faith. You, you name it, you claim it, you say it, you declare it. And I want to tell you, there's a lot of great truths in the faith camp, a lot of great truths. But I do also believe that you can way overcompensate and, it, and, and it can, God can be all about you. Me being prosperous, me being this, and, 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 and you can get it out of balance. And then they have some that are in the prayer camp that say, if you don't pray every day, all day, then, then you're not really saved. And, and they just pray, they harp and bowl ministry, and thank God for it. There's great truths to it. And then you have, I, I call it the divide the hair camp, that they're, they're sitting there and they're, they're nitpicking about every little deal in the Bible. You've heard it, but did, did Adam have a navel? You know, he was created, wasn't born, did he even have a navel? And they want to figure that out. And then, and then you have the crew that just, they just want to worship all day, every day, just want to worship for hours, just want to worship. And then, then you have the spirit-led camp, that it's all about the gifts of the spirit and praying in the spirit. And, and there's all kind of things. And I believe that those beliefs are the materials that you are constructing on the foundation, which is Christ. Those beliefs. And as your pastor, I just want to talk real with you. I, I believe balance is key. I believe you have to approach the whole word of God with a humble heart by the leadership of the Spirit. And in the terms of building, I just want to say, stay close to the blueprints. Like if you're building a house, run over there and, and look and see where that wall goes and build that. And then run back to the blueprints. The problem arises when you get far away from the blueprints and start coming up with your own stuff. People do that. They come up with their own stuff instead of staying close to the blueprint. And, and you know what you also need to do is, is, is consult the foreman, the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, stay close to the blueprints, stay close to the foreman, and you're going to construct a good house. But practically speaking, you say, where does Bethany fall in, in this world of teaching and belief? I'll just tell you, I humbly approach the Word of God with an, with an open heart and ask the Holy Spirit to direct with balance. Balance is key. And I want to read 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. And this is Paul saying, the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love. Can we stop there and just say that if your theology does not bring you to loving people more, it's a bad theology. You're building on wrong stuff. 
What you believe should be making you love people more and more and more. It should make you love God more and more. It should make you love people more and more. If your theology is making you ticked off and angry and, and, and religious, something is wrong. You got some weird stuff going on that foundation, some ugly paint filled with love that comes from a pure heart. Your theology should be purifying you getting holier and holier and cleaner and clear conscious and a genuine faith. Your theology should build your faith, should make your faith come alive and believe God for, for great stuff. This is Paul saying, this was my purpose in teaching is that you'd be filled with love from a pure heart and a clear conscience and a genuine faith. But I'll also give you one other key to what you believe. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, and these three things shall remain, faith, hope, and love. Can I just propose to you that the gold in Paul's analogy is faith. The silver is hope. And the jewels is love. If you want to build your life well on the foundation, build it on faith in God, hope for the future, and love for people everywhere. And it'll stand up to the test. It'll stand up to the test. But I also believe that it's what we believe, but those beliefs produce actions. Can I give you a quote? This is worth getting. All of us want to hear at the end of our life, well done, good and faithful servant. But here's the quote. There is no well done without well doing. There is no well done without well doing. Yeah, you want to hear well done, but you haven't done anything good. <laughs> y'all, the South Camp is preaching to me, just so y'all know. There is no well done without well doing. Your beliefs should be impacting what you're doing and how you're living. I mean, don't just believe you should be kind to people and good to people and generous to people. Let that belief impact how you act and start living this thing out. I believe that what you do in life is what you're building. Those are your actions. But let's take it one step further is the why. This is the motive. I believe that that house that stands before God that gets the breath of his judgment is all about the motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? Are you doing it to impress people? You think about the good acts that you're doing. Are you doing it to impress people? Look at me serving. Look at me giving. I'm telling you, it should all be out of your love for Jesus, that cornerstone. Everything has to be in relationship to that cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Amen? So you can choose a seafood gumbo or you can choose sausage and chicken if you want. But just make sure you know what you're building with. And then the final thought that I want to give you is build for what's coming. Build for what's coming. First, build on Christ. Second is build with caution. The third is build for what's coming. You know, each and every one of us have an imminent day where we're going to stand before the Lord by ourselves and with the house that we've built. I don't have to stand in front of your house as ugly or as beautiful as it is. I have to stand before the Lord with the house that I have constructed with my beliefs, with my actions, and with my motives. And I stand before that house, and God, the breath of God is going to breathe. And you know what? God loves me very much. He loves me so much. And in Christ, I am saved from wrath. And I got my foundation pure. But you know what? My works are going to be tested. Everything that I've ever done, and I'm going to stand there, and I'm going to get the breath of God. And so I want to build for what's coming. Here in Louisiana, we know how to prep for hurricanes. Recently, I was in Tennessee, and they had this hurricane simulator. And you step in this hurricane simulator, and it's supposed that all these fans start blowing on you, and they say, this is what it feels like in a hurricane. So I said, oh, I got to feel this. So I, I went in there, and can I just tell you, it wasn't even close to what a, a hurricane feels like. And all these people that were visiting from all parts of the country, they were like, wow, this is amazing. This is what a hurricane feels like. I was like, you guys have no idea. <laughs> Try getting hit upside the head with a, a branch, and then, and then we're starting to get close, you know. But we know how to prep for, for a hurricane. Some people prep better than others. You know, I have neighbors that 
a week out. They have already boarded their windows. They've already got sandbags around their whole house. They've already stocked up on gas and their generator's ready to go and they got cans. I've never been that good. I'm always like, you know, six hours before trying to do whatever. I, <laughs> but we are all, uh, we, we all know how to prep for hurricanes, but do you know how to prep for judgment? Do you know how to prep for what's coming? Are you building with that day in mind that the house I'm constructing and, and, you know, some of us are just waltzing through life just as if that day is not coming. And, guys, it's coming. It's coming. And, you, and please hear me. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching at me. This is something I live with daily. Jonathan, are you living for that day when your house will be breathed on by the breath of God? I'm not looking at other preachers. I'm not looking at other guys that are doing great stuff for other things. I got my eyes on one thing. That day when my house is getting the hurricane, when that day is getting breathed on, and you should be too. Don't live for right now. By the grace of God, lift your eyes and see the day when your house is going to be breathed on. And just pray that you're believing right that your actions are coming from those beliefs and that you are doing those actions with the right motives. And one day, we're going to either receive a reward or we're going to see everything destroyed in front of us. So guys, remember, build on the right foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Believe the right things. Let them produce the right actions and do it with the right motives. And on that day, you're going to be Glad as you stand in front of your house. Do y'all remember the story of the three little pigs? I've been reminded of it recently as I've had kids, but who's afraid of the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Yeah, the big bad wolf. That's judgment day, and, and, and he's coming. Judgment, judgment day is coming, and this is not a fire and brimstone message. It's just a straight up Just like it came for the ark, Noah's ark, it's coming. And somebody built a house out of hay because they were too lazy to build a good house with good materials. Some people built a house or the other pig built with sticks. And then another guy took his time and built a house with bricks. I want to be the guy that builds with bricks. And that's what Paul is teaching us to hear is build carefully. Build carefully. Amen. You have a chance right now, every person that's here, maybe you're 60 years into your life and you say, I'm, I don't like what I've built so far. Well, neither do I. I've built some stuff that I feel like is going to burn up. But you know what? Every breath you have is an opportunity to start building right. And you have an opportunity right now to start building your life with the stuff that matters. And it starts with Jesus Christ. And you say, Jonathan, I hate everything I've built. I hate it all. I hate the paint colors. I hate, I hate it all. You know, one time I messed up one of my gumbos with duck. I put duck in there, and it messed it up. Some of you have put duck in your gumbo, and it's messed up the whole thing. You have an opportunity right now to start over and to build your life on Jesus Christ and then to begin to construct what am I going to believe, what actions are going to come from that belief, and what are my motives going to be? Guys, let's build houses that are rock solid on gold and silver and precious jewels. I'm I'm preaching this message today, number one, because I need to hear it, number two, because I love you, and I want you to be proud of the house you build. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads, please, and close your eyes. If you're here and you say, Jonathan, I, man, either you're visiting today or been coming for a while, but your foundation is wrong. And I don't know what your foundation has been, but you've never come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, it all starts there. It all starts with this one conversation. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you love me. And I'm asking you to please forgive my sins and wash me. If you've never come to that place, like you're building on the wrong foundation, you're building on sand. But if you'll come to that place where you make Jesus the Lord of your life and you begin to construct everything on that foundation, that's when you begin to build right. And if you're here and you want to make Jesus the cornerstone of your life, if you want to make him the Lord of your life, if you say, Jonathan, I want to receive 
forgiveness of my sins. And maybe you feel guilty right now. You feel ashamed. I promise you, if you'll accept Jesus in your life, the blood of Jesus washes you free from all of that. But if you're here and you give me the privilege of praying with you and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you want to make that decision today all across this room and at every campus, I'd like to ask you, would you please lift your hand right now and look up at me and say, that's me, Jonathan. Pray with me today. Come on, lift it high. Lift it high. Say, pray with me. All right, bro. God bless you. Lift it high. Okay, ma'am. God bless you. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. All across this building. Three, four, five, six. Lift it high. Seven, eight. Lift it high, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. God bless you. God bless you. It's 18. God bless you. You can put your hands down. Man, that's so awesome. So many people wanting to make Jesus the Lord of their life. Church, let's pray with those who just lifted their hands. Let's say this out loud. You guys that lifted your hands, talk to God with passion. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you love me very much. Today I give you my heart. I give you my past. I give you my sin. And I ask you, forgive me. Cleanse me of unrighteousness. Become the Lord of my life. Jesus, my eyes are on you. I'm building my life upon you. From this day forward, be my Savior, my Lord, my King. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's celebrate with all those who just gave their hearts to Jesus.